Um, here we have Team Singapore. Let's give it up for them. Good evening, judges. My name is Sunny. This is Wei Hao. That's Kang Long. That's Debbie. And we're Team Mama Bear from Singapore. And today, I'll be presenting to you our solution, the Teacher's Think Tank. But before I get into that, I want to start with why is it that we are here? When we began this journey into the Imagine Cup, we began it by imagining. We imagined a world where teachers were so connected that the world became a global classroom. A classroom where every child had an opportunity to quality education. An education that would nurture generations of problem solvers. And with that in mind, we decided that we want to achieve universal primary education. But when I talk about universal primary education, the first thing that comes into our minds is that it's about getting a child to step into a classroom. But the fight no longer stops there. It's more than that. It's also about ensuring that when she goes to that classroom, she, has the basic, she learns the basic skills in order to move ahead in life and then graduates from primary school education on time. So let's take a look at what has happened so far in terms of achieving universal primary education. In 2000, what we saw was that the Millennium Development Goals were released. Shortly after, primary school education was made compulsory, followed by free. And then we saw students coming into the education system, more children getting enrolled. And to accommodate that, teachers were being employed. And they were employed so fast that qualifications were overlooked. And due to that, what we see today is that there are 2.6 million teachers in sub-Saharan Africa, but more than half are unqualified. And due to this, what we're looking at right now is that although there are 73% of children in primary school, more than half are not completing it. So this is a problem. And we feel that teachers are this variable that we can change in order to, get a, to reduce these dropout rates. And it's not only us who's saying that. The many other researchers that has been conducted, the states the same thing, that we need to support them in order to provide quality education and then reduce these dropout rates. And to give you a better understanding of this situation, I want you to imagine being a teacher. And every single day, you step into your classroom and you look at them and you realize that the future of theirs is in your hands. But you're not given anything else. You do not have any kind of training. So you're working on qualified. And every time you look at those children, you realize that they do not have books. Everything you say is written into the sands. And this is primarily because you do not receive any kind of support. And it, the matter gets worse. Why? Because you're so isolated, you do not have any more channels to publicize, to say out that I am facing this kind of problems. It feels like a nightmare, doesn't it? But the sad thing is, teachers like Ms. Bill Kisu face it every single day. And this is nothing atypical. Every, every teacher goes through this in Sub-Saharan Africa. And then we look at, so what we're looking at, the problem is that the poor quality of teachers are due to three major factors, namely training, no resources, and no channels to say out that they need all this. So then we sat down. And then we also realized that in, we have only five years in order to achieve this universal primary education. So time is running out. We sat down and we thought, okay, how can we fix this? What would the solution be like? And we said we wanted a solution that would be simple and effective. Simple meaning it had to make sense. It had to work in the environment with ease and also make sense. And with that in mind, we designed the Teacher's Think Tank. What is the Teacher's Think Tank? It's a mobile-centric collaborative platform where teachers can come on board, share their problems with an international community, learn from them, and go ahead and teach the children in a better way. Our Teacher's Think Tank has got two major modules, namely the Teacher's Think Board and the Teacher's Think Map. The Teacher's Think Board has been designed with an international community, learn from them, and go ahead and teach the children in a better way. Our Teacher's Think Tank has got two major modules, namely the Teacher's Think Board and the Teacher's Think Map. The Teacher's Think Board has been designed for teachers and the Think Map for NGOs. So let's take a look at the first module, the Teacher's Think Board. How does it work? First up, let's say Ms. Bill Kisu has a question. 
she can SMS it to us. We would take that message, we'd pick out the keywords, and we'll process it. How do you process it? We bring those keywords into our database, and we search. In our database, there are questions that have been asked in the past. And every question has an answer that has been ranked by the community itself. And once we find the best ranking answer for that, we send it back to these teachers. But then the next question in the back of our minds would be, what if that question does not exist in your database? So in that case, what we do is we go ahead and email potential answerers. Potential answerers are individuals who have specified that they are willing to help teachers in areas such as pedagogy or content knowledge. And we also broadcast this answer, this question, on our website. So let's take a look at the first demo of our system. So what I'm what, what's happening right now is we're bringing up the mobile platform that we have. So the first thing you notice is that it's in a different language because we decided that these teachers have already enough to deal with. Language should not be another barrier. So this is written in French, and it states a, qu a teacher that's asking a question, what is the other word for happy? And you can see there's an embracketed E-N. It specifies that she wants an answer back in English. So let's go ahead and send this message. What happens now? We take the message, we pick up those important keywords, bring it into our database, we do the processing by looking for the best answer from the best matching question. Once we have the answer, we package it back, and we SMS it to our system. As you can see, it's, it states illiterate. OK, so that's just one word. What happens in another instance where it's more elaborative? And as a teacher, I might not be able to understand the English language. So in that instance, for this example, we're looking at a teacher asking in, in Dutch, how do I describe disappointed? Well, let's go ahead and send this. What happens now? We take the message again, we pull out those keywords, go into our database, we find the best answer, and then we retrieve that. But this time around, we convert it back into a native language in Dutch for this instance. Then we SMS it back to her. OK, so this is a response. Basically, what it's saying, it means not happy. But as an educator, I might not be satisfied with an answer. In instances such as that, we can go ahead and SMS a no to them. Our system will take the message, bring it back to our database, bring it back to our website, actually, and then broadcast it and let the world talk about it, discuss, and then provide the best answer. So let's go ahead and send that. OK, what you receive right now is an intermediary message that states, OK, your message is online. Everybody's discussing about it. We'll get, to you, get back to you shortly. OK. So let's take a look at our website and see what's going on there. So right now, let's go ahead and refresh it. And as you can see, our question is up online. Now the world can go ahead and discuss about it, provide answers to these teachers, and maybe help the teacher out. OK, so this concludes our first module, the Teachers Think Board. It's a platform where teachers can come on board, share their problems with the international communities, regardless of where they are in the world and get answers for that. What about the other issue, where they do not have resources, no books, no writing materials? For that, we design the, the Teachers Think Map. Teachers Think Map is a platform where teachers can come on board and request for resources. For example, Ms. Bill Kisu, maybe she does not have English books. She can send SMS to us, we take the message, we process it, put it up on our Think Map. Once it's on the Think Map, we go ahead and notify NGOs within the region and tell them, hey, there's a school down there that requires assistance in, in English books. Can, can you provide assistance? And then these NGOs can go ahead and provide assistance to these schools. Everybody's happy. So let's take a look at the demo of our system. So we're bringing up our, thing, our Bing map. First up, what you see is that two, there are two different colors pin namely the red pin and the yellow pin. The red pin represents requests that have been unattended to, and the yellow pin represents requests that have been attended to, are being attended to right now. But eventually what you'd see is that this map gets filled up with schools requesting for information. And then you see it filled up with pins. But as an NGO, it might be hard for me to actually filter through one by one for every pin to find a suitable school. What we also have is a filtering system 
but we can filter based on resources that the schools require or the region that they are in. So let's go ahead and search for a school in Gabon. Okay, we found a school. So then you, as an NGO, I want to see critical information, such as, let's take a look, the school's name, the person to contact, the type of resources they require, the quantity of those resources, and the address of those schools. And as an NGO, okay, I have English books. I think I can provide it to them. I can go ahead and confirm this request. And then we go ahead and send SMS, an SMS to this teacher to state that, okay, your request is being handled by an NGO right now. So this summarizes what is the teacher's thing map about. It's a platform where teachers can SMS to us, and we try and do our best to match that request to NGOs around you. So with our solution, what we see right now is that with the teacher's think tank, we become that channel for these teachers where they can receive support where the teacher's thing map provides them with writing materials and books. And the teacher's thing board gives them better training to get better qualified. So what we're trying to do here actually is to build a community, a community of teachers, where every teacher, regardless of where she is, she can come on board, share her problem, and harness the collective wisdom that these teachers provide. And not only that, we also have NGOs within this community such as TESA, UNESCO, and UNICEF. So let's take a look at the concepts behind building the system. We designed our system to be fast. Fast meaning we wanted it to be quickly adopted and quickly producing results. And by fast, we mean that we wanted it to be feasible. We wanted it to be affordable, scalable, and timeless. So let's take a look at how a solution is one of these, each of this. Feasibility. When it comes to feasibility, it had to make sense in the environment it was placed in and also to solve the problem that we identified. We saw in sub-Saharan Africa, mobile penetration rates were, were high, and yet internet penetration not so, very low. So we, we knew that there was a mobile market, and it's growing fast. But what about mobile solutions being placed in a learning and teaching environment? with teachers accept it. And we found a, a trial carried out by Professor John Trexler by 8,000 teachers in Kenya. And it showed that teachers were accepting and interested in using SMS technologies. But being interested and accepting it is one thing. How about effectiveness? If so, in which area? We did research and we found out it is effective. And it's been proven by many researchers in areas such as English language or vocabulary. So. It, it made sense in the environment. There was a mobile market. It could solve the problem. What about affordability? When it comes to affordability, the first question is, how is it a win situation for the user, and how is it a win situation for the company that sustains it? And when it comes to sustainability, the first question, who is sustain it? We've identified Party Airtel as one of them. Party Airtel is a potential investor because they are one of the top five telcos in the world. They recently stated that they are looking into how can they penetrate in the rural market. And also, for, due to that, they, they bought over Zane Telco, which has a large presence in sub-Saharan Africa. OK, so we know who. How are they going to do that? Well, Bharti et al. can come up with a package that states, as long as you send your question SMS through our gateway, it's free of charge. Now, the teachers will find it as a win situation where they see it as a free developmental training program. But well, what's the win situation for the Bharati, for Bharati Airtel? Well, Bharati Airtel gets an access to a new market, a market that's 4.1 million people strong. And they can do that, be close to no cost. Why? Because they have that infrastructure. They have that mo the SMS gateway, the shared hosting space. And also by doing so, they fulfill their corporate social responsibilities. So our solution is affordable. It's a win situation for the companies that sustain it and for those who use it. What about scalability? When we talk about scalability, we mean that we want countries to come on board as easily as possible. Countries like Ghana can come on board simply by having an SMS gateway and some shared hosting space, and others can follow suit. So our system could, can grow with equal ease anywhere around the world. 